Hello folks and welcome, my name is Colin, call sign MM0OPX if you've not been here before. This video is actually a follow up to a video I made 10 months prior to this one. Now over those last 10 months I've had a lot of comments and I've had countless emails, people asking me what ferrite cores and what winding uh, configuration do I need to use in order to have a, a, an efficient NFED half-wave transformer for high power. Some people have been wanting to run say 300-400 watts digital, other people have been wanting to run upwards of 800 watts, sometimes a kilowatt. Now I don't have a definitive answer, but um, quite common uh, configurations out there is these, and they look both the same actually. One is an FT, a three stack of FT240 43s and a three stack of FT240 52, so 43 material and 52 material. Now, there's something called the Curie point, and that's the temperature at which basically the permeability goes and the ferrite actually loses all its properties. So, 43 material has a much lower Curie point temperature than 52. So it stands to reason that 52 material will actually uh, withstand much more power. And I think that is definitely true. But is the 52 actually as efficient as 43 or vice versa? We just don't know. So the purpose of this video is actually to show you my findings of two common windings and basically to let you make your mind up. So let's go and take a look. So what you're looking at in front of you here is just a set of results from the measurements I've taken um, over the last 10 months and I've just been adding to this slowly and slowly. I'll put a link to this Excel document uh, down in the description. It's just a, a, a Google document and you can view it, you can download it and then save your own copy, do whatever you want with it. And perhaps maybe you could do your own measurements and actually see how they actually compare to mine. So the method I've actually used to measure these is what's actually called the back-to-back -back method and that's basically where we have two cores identical cores and we basically put them as you say back to back we use our vector network analyzer I use a nano VNA so I connect one end to here one end to there I basically put in some signal here goes through the transformer comes out here and we get a, a figure DB figure a minus figure we divide that by two and then we get the loss for one core now, I've been using that method right the way through for all this testing, so all my results are all relative. So if I was to use another uh, test method, that probably wouldn't be um, uh, consistent, but my results, I think, are consistent. So, what you're looking at here, as I said, 240-43. So if you look at a standard 240-43 core, so a 49 to 1, so we've got two turns on the primary, 14 turns on the secondary. And most of these have actually got the 100 picofarad cap, which happens to be a TDK cap. If you look at, so this is your kind of standard NFED half wave that people build. And you look at the efficiency, and it's not terrible. Um, I've got this kind of grading system here, um, just for my benefit, but it's not actually bad. And if you look at the higher bands up to 20 and 15, you're, you know, you're, you're over 80%. But you could do a lot better. So that was kind of what I did for reference before we started looking at this core. So then we actually look at this one here and this is actually one of the two choices that you should use I think if you're going to use a uh, three stack. So this is a three stack, 240-43, two turns uh, primary, 14 turns secondary. And if you look at the losses here you could see even on the low bands that's really excellent. When you're getting into the high 80s and over, that's really good losses. Half a dB, nearly 0.6 a dB. Really, really good. At 15, you're still nearly 84% efficient. That's that's not bad at all. I, I would be happy with that if I'm getting all this on the lower bands. Remember, everything's a compromise. When you start to look at 10, that's when the losses for me start to become a bit more, a bit greater. So, I mean, it's not terrible, but I mean, of your 100 watts, you're only going to get 66 year watts out. So, a 3 stack, a 49 to 1, just your standard winding. Um, I don't have one here, but you can imagine that this was, a, this was a 3 stack. This would be the winding that you would actually want to use in order to get this, although you would have a 3 stack. I then actually did, a, this was the last, last measurement that I did, so yeah, this is a 43, although they look identical. So these are basically 2 turns primary, 14 turns secondary, but... These are actually close windings because I had some 
different results on the smaller cores that I was using and in the end I actually had to recalibrate the Nano v &A four times with different connectors because I simply didn't believe the results. If you start looking at the loss you're getting with these three stack um, with the capacitor they're just incredible losses. So you look at your efficiency, your single figures there efficiency, 12%, 11%, nearly 17. 10 metres actually gets a, 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 a good bit better. So it was a real funny one, but I don't know whether it's the inductance in here it actually affecting that, but real terrible results with this close winding. And then what I did was I then cut the capacitor off and I took some measurements again and some of them actually improved. Some of them decreased and actually on 10 metres it was actually really quite efficient with just 0.6 of a dB of loss. So the clear winner here is if you're going to use a, a, a 3 stack of 43s, this is the winding that you want to use again, your standard kind of winding that everyone uses. Not really bad, but just bearing in mind that it's not great uh, on 10 metres. Now, we need to then have a look at the 52 material, which is here. So, only test I've done with the 52 exactly the same. We did this style of winding and then we did the close winding. And if you look at the three stack with the standard winding, you can see it's actually really bad on 160 in comparison to this one. So you can see 8.52 loss, 1.5 loss, three times the loss. I actually thought the 52 material would actually be better on the low bands. When you start to look at 80, 40 and 20, it's actually really good. And I would be more than happy with these figures. I mean, to get a 92%, 0.36 on 40, that is excellent. Really excellent. So, I mean, you could quite happily have this 3 stack for 80, 40 and 20 and run your high power and you'll have quite an efficient antenna. When you look down at 15, mm, it's getting down there, you know, starting to get a lot more loss, 1.15. You look at 10, you're losing more than half your power. But that's maybe to be expected using 52 material. Now, again, similarly to the 240-43, we did the close turns and these were the losses. And if you look at them, they're just really quite shocking. Um, with the exception of 10 metres again, which we actually seen. And the 4091, which is actually about 10% better. You know, I was just discounting these. So, there's actually a couple, of, a couple of things to these transformers. One thing is having a low loss transformer but the other thing is being able to have it as a workable and usable antenna because just because it's efficient doesn't mean it's going to work as an antenna there's no really no way of knowing until you actually get a, a, a wire connected up to it a lot of people will actually use a resistor and they'll put a resistor between the ground um, and the antenna put it across an analyzer and they'll look for this low SWR right across HF in my experience that isn't good. All that does is gives you an indication that it may be okay. But I've seen people with doing a so-called um, measurement and they've got this lovely flat SWR right the way across HF. Well, so does a dummy load, remember. You know, just because you have an efficient winding doesn't mean that it's actually going to make a good antenna and it's going to have a good match. But we know from what people have been doing for years now that the, this style of winding does work, does give you good SWR across the desired bands. I think it's just knowing the limitations. So that's your choices, folks, in my opinion. Now, I know that these results are going to be really um, quite, it could be a bit contentious, um, and some people are going to challenge me, and I actually welcome the challenge. I think that's good especially in our hobby. But if you're going to challenge me, then please have the data to back it up. Don't just say, well, I am working in this country or this person says this. You know, give me some data 
and I, I would actually encourage people to do these measurements themselves. As I say, link in the description if you don't know the method and please make these measurements and come back and comment what results did you get? Because I, I would be really be pleased to see what they were <clears throat> because if they're drastically different from these, then I would be worried. I've seen people doing measurements on these other people, which is good to see, and their measurements were within 0 0.05 of a dB of my measurements. So I'm quite happy um, at the method. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> there's, I mean, there's no such thing as a free dinner. Certainly with these cores, you're not going to have an efficient core for the whole of HF. It's a compromise. So there's your choices, folks. So there we are. Um, I'd love to know what you think. Um, if you've done these tests, as I've said, you know, let me know what your results were and, and how you're getting on with them. Now, I think NFED half waves get a bad name on bands like the higher bands, especially 10 metres. And that's not because it's perhaps a, an, an inefficient core or inefficient winding. I think it's because simply because the wire is too long. You know, if you've got an NFED half wave for 40 metres, you've got two wavelengths of wire here and you're going to have massive peaks and nulls. So you're going to be a good signals in some directions, but more likely than not, you're going to get some deep nulls and uh, you're going to have a bad time with that antenna. So, you know, even if you're only radiating 50% of your power, you know, you're still going to make some contacts. Um, you know, I have... I have to thank Tom at G2NV for the loan of these cores and I've had them for a long time now, I've probably had them for about eight months. So Tom sent me six cores, um, six of each, um, sorry, 12, six of each, um, to allow me to do these tests. And I simply couldn't have done these tests without your help, Tom, so thank you very much for that. And I'll, and I'll get, they'll get these sent back to you and I'll, I'll get in contact about that. There we are. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, once again, let me know what you think. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one.